Hello, everyone, and welcome back to, to Psychics and Intuitive Teachers Hour. Uh, we really appreciate the fact that you guys sent so many well wishes when we had to cancel last week. We are going to get right into this show. Uh, lots of readings, a few guests. But first, for those who don't know me, my name's Nora Trisello. I am an intuitive teacher. I do lectures. I've been invited to Bangkok recently to speak at the International uh, Conference on Intuition and Psychology. And I'm a best-selling author on two books on Amazon. And my co-host, hi, it's Chris from Conversations from Chris. How's everybody doing? I'm the psychic and medium on board tonight, and I do healing, and I do clearings, kind of all that stuff together. And I just want to let you know we thank you so very much for your patience with us for not being here to play with you last week, but we're we'll here this week. We'll make up for it now. <laughs> we'll make up for it. I mean, you got two psychics, two intuitive teachers, and we're going to do two times better than always. Uh, real quick, our disclaimers are intuition is very useful, but it is not your only tool. Please use common sense. Look at all your evidence and, of course, weigh your intuition. We'll teach you how to use it, but it is not the only guiding force in your life. It can be safe, fun, and useful. And for all those young viewers, we ask that this be for adults only. We are going to make a special show just for our under 18 crowd. But this we ask for you just to look, but don't ask questions. If you want to watch, that's fine and learn. But we basically are tuning into older over 18 and above. All right. We'll okay. see you guys when it's your turn. So we're going to jump right into the show. For those of you who don't know, you can put your questions into the comment section. I will be looking down a lot at the computer. Chris uses the tarot cards. She'll be looking down at her tarot cards. I just read the energy by tapping in and stepping back. It's a technique I talk about in one of my books. But before jumping on to any questions on the feed, we're going to bring Deb right up. She's going to be our first guest, and she'll be joining us in just a moment. Hello, Deb. Let me get you side by side with us. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Super. We can hear you. This is awesome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And what's your questions? Oh, gosh. Do you have any questions to start? Um, just my husband and I recently retired. And would just like a good look at what the future looks like for us and as well as my husband's health. Okay. Well, I did a layout for you and it shows that you were very, you had in the last couple of weeks, you had a life changing decision to make and that you are very much aware of what's going to happen around you with the retirement issues. And I get there's still a lot of a, emotion attached to it but you have a lot of choices here and you're co-creating with the universe in december and they're telling me make sh make sure all the legal issues are nailed down safely and that you've met all of the deadlines and the requirements to start using the money effectively because i feel like some of the money you'll need to use and some of it you won't and i think you'll be able to portion it out and that way save some tax dollars or something because I keep seeing, oh, just push that off. You don't really need that right now. It'll be a lot of, it'll be a big savings later on. So you might want to call your accountant. But I do see some really good long-term news. And are you thinking about going back to work part-time? Because you're ready for it, aren't you? I'm, I'm a little nervous about not working. Okay, because I see you thinking about work in February. I'm not really sure what you want to do here, but you're going to be happier working rather than not working. Okay. And I feel like it'll be up to you whether you really want to work because you want to travel. And I do see a lot of travel, but I see you fighting yourself over this whole issue and your husband kind of being like, well, I thought we agreed. <laughs> and then you did a left hand turn. Like, what was that all about? And you're going, well, 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 paper looks really good, hon, but it makes me really nervous. And I do think that you might work a little bit here and there, like maybe part time, and he might volunteer for something. His health on another level. I'm getting something different for his health. Huh? 
I'm not getting the best of health, but I'm not getting real seriously ill. No, I get there's some issues around his health, but nothing that's going to cause a surgery or anything. I, they keep telling me he can manage it. Okay, great. Like he's not perfectly fine, but it's nothing that's going. It's almost all age appropriate for uh, our culture. It's like he doesn't really have anything that's not manageable by meds. Right. That's what they're handing me is a bottle of pills. Oh, so he that. might have high blood pressure or something. And diabetes. Or diabetes because I'm getting, they're just going to tell him how to do it and it's up to him to do it. Okay. Okay. And they're telling me he doesn't like water, does he? He's not yeah. a real big water drinker. You got to get him drinking water. They keep doing this. <laughs> and I'm like, what's that all about? And they're like, he doesn't like water. <laughs> you really need to get that boy to drink some water. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I've been telling him that he has bronchitis, so that'll think, help him a lot. And lemon, if you can get some lemon in it, he doesn't like it, and that's what I've been trying to. But <laughs> so, Rital, you do all the things he hates. Yes, I'm a nag. Um, I, I did want to ask too. Part of the reason I I had retired early was I have an elderly aunt and mother that I've been helping out with, and and my sisters as well. And I was just wondering, how are things looking for them? Uh, my aunt thinks she's going to die in the next year. She's seeing family members when she dreams, and she sees people walking in her apartment during the day. Um, I'm going to feel this a little. We are very often given the same message when we're ever asked about a person passing their time. We're always told it's none of your business. Okay. However, when they start, all the people start seeing their family members coming and going. It is a definite sign that they are working on transitioning into uh, into their new life, leaving this one. So exactly when, um, I would just say most likely soon, like you're saying, but they don't give us timelines on that. Yeah, because it's really up to God, essentially. We can, we can see shifts in their energy patterns. We can see when when they might get like a little bit worse or a little bit better. I mean, and her energy is pretty darn weak right now. But She's not tired. knowing her, I don't right. know, is it normal. Uh, normal given her age or something? It's not normal no. for her at this point, but. Right. Yeah, so she, I mean, she's, she's her energy is draining, but we can't give you a timeline. Right, okay. Not that. Yeah, and your mother, I get your mother's got some serious issues, but they've been taken care of in the past, and now she just has to maintain that level. Okay. And I just don't know that she wants anybody to have to take care of her. No. Hers is more, I feel, a pride issue mm -hmm. than an illness right now. Okay. She likes having you around, but only if you're going to do fun things, not because she needs you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, another quick question if you have it, and then we're going to jump on to the feed and answer some questions there. Uh, no, I think that's it for now. Oh, I know. Okay. Um, is there, are there any messages from my family, my father or a family member who's passed? Is, is there anything there? Your father's really excited. I'm seeing an amusement park or like a church fair, like, like a... Um, did he like to go to those places or take you to those kind of places, like Ferris wheel, those kind of things? He used with to take booths. Okay. He's showing us that so that you know it's him. And it's coming, of course, with a tremendous amount of love. So it's his way of telling me to just that his um, intense love for you. Oh, okay. And that's his way of confirming it was him. Okay. And he says that your mother's stubborn, he's telling me. And that you can't take it on your shoulders if she says no. He says, let her no be her no. Yeah. Because you're taking it to heart if she doesn't want to do something that you think she should do. Okay? Yes. And he's saying, don't forget to live your life, too. That's one of the realizations I'm sort of coming to at this point. It's very disappointing. But it's the reality of things. Uh, so, and he says he's been trying to leave you little clues here and there to help you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Deb. 
Thank yeah. you for joining us. We're going to jump on the feed now. You have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Take Bye -bye. care. I'm trying to be polite and not cut people off when they go by. It's like I have in previous shows. <laughs> and I'm getting there. Carla Jones. Uh, is my husband around me and how do I know? Carla, thank you for joining us. And how do you know? Yes, he is around you. I'm, I'm seeing pennies. And, um, pennies and I'm seeing them on the floor of, car, of a car. So I don't know if you're finding change and if it means something to you. Um, but that's his way. He's showing me that to let you know it's him. He is around you. Pennies from heaven. And he's Pennies laughing. from heaven. Because <laughs> he says she doesn't like to pick them up if they're not on heads. Okay. All right. I hope we helped you out. Let us know. Please hit those hearts and please share the show. Uh, and you can talk between each other. Yeah, really. If anybody picks up anything for Carla, anything for Deb, anything for our next guest, share it with each other. It's really great in, um, when you're working together. So... David, my son, he's asking for some prayers for tomorrow because it's a very, a very intense day for him. Uh, so he'll take any prayers and positive vibes. Uh, <laughs> please do that. Also, just so you know, we have a very powerful prayer group. If you're ever in need, don't hesitate to let us know. We will put it on the line with the other prayer warriors. Um, Gina, she's going to Boston Thanks for Thanksgiving. Uh, Boston to my sisters for Thanksgiving and I'm worried about leaving my grandmother home alone. People are supposed to check in on her but will she be safe and okay? I always worry worry about Rosie. Okay, yes. I got good. I got she's going to be fine. In fact, she's going to enjoy it. So whoever's being keeping an eye on her is actually going to make her feel really loved. And spoil her. Yeah, so you got her in good hands, honey. Go enjoy your sister's company. Uh, and then let us know when you come back how it went and how was <laughs> Rosie. Uh, Lena Young, I've been really missing my mom lately and just wish I could feel her around us. Uh, mom is trying to get through to them. There's I, a I shield think. between them. Something's going Lena's on. Lena's still Lena's still grieving a lot for her, and that's why you can't feel mom. When we grieve, guys, you have to understand we build a shelter, like a concrete bubble around ourselves, and the other spirit world can't get through it. And when they die, they go over and basically no energy. And every day of our our timeline, because they don't have time, think of a drop of water in an empty bottle, and that's how their energy is collected. And they might have been there for years, so they have like a, maybe a half an inch of water, a half an inch of energy. Sometimes that's not enough to push through that concrete. And the best way is to pray for them a lot. The more you pray, the more energy they have. The more you... And it connects easier. It does a lot easier. Um, and one of the reasons she's telling you to pray is because when you're busy praying, your your heart opens up and it busts through that concrete like really a laser easily. beam. And what I'm getting, I'm getting a very soft, comfortable... Uh, towel and like it's being wrapped I can feel it on my face and it's kind of wrapped around my shoulders so I don't know if you if your mom is showing that to me to remind you of something when you were a child or was that something you did for her as she got older but that's her way of saying I'm here honey I'm here think of the feel of the towel so I hope that helps. Please let us know if we're on target or not. And again, anybody out there, you got something, you're picking up anything for Lena Young, let her know. Um, just again, real quick, when you are tapping in for other people, like Chris and I are doing right now, we centered ourselves with prayer. We shrunk up our own personalities. We stepped them on the side and we just become a channel for the energy coming from on high to come through. It is not a special gift per se. It's just practicing to be able to do it. All right. Uh, oh, Diane, thank you. Press for David. You got him, Dave. <laughs> All right. Oh, Carla, she says, thank you. So, yes, it did make a difference. 
I am going to keep going. And, and Gina says, thank you. Prayers for David again. Thank you, Gabriel. And um, send me hearts. I like hearts. <laughs> I really want to bring up our next guest. And then I'm going to jump back on the feed. Our next guest um, is Lisa. And she's going to be popping up on the screen any second. Lisa has. Hi, Lisa. Can you hear us, honey? I can hear Great. you. Can you hear me? Good. We can hear you. It's a little hard, so speak up. I will go. Um, I don't know Lisa personally. However, she was a client of both mine and Chris's when we spoke. Uh, Lisa, how free are we to say how well we know you? Please feel free to say anything you like because okay. I would like my so, story to help others. Good. Lisa's story is actually in my book. Um, I didn't use real names, the spiritual psychic. This was the book I wrote originally for people who are in this field to understand how powerful evil can be. Uh, Lisa's story was pretty darn powerful. It's the one that Chris and I spoke about on a previous show where it was very hard for us to even see through the smudge smoke. Um, and that's when I found out that Chris, like me, pray when we do our work. And it was so great to find another psychic who understood the power of prayer. And it took us, once we got together and moved the other group out, we went in and 20 minutes cleared her house. And then her sons <laughs> decided to use a Ouija board again and brought them back in and we cleaned it again. And I told them if they ever do it again, I'm never coming back again because I'm not their house cleaner. Uh, and so far, so good. They did start trouble again, but Lisa did exactly what we were doing, which is yeah. very powerful. Um, I, I want to give you a chance to get any questions answered, but I'd like you to share a little bit how you yourself keep your property clear of any kind of evil spirits, anything that's demonic, anything that's just negative. If you could share how you do it for our audience to learn. All right. Are you hearing me? Anymore? I'm hearing you. It's a little hard. I'm hoping our guest can hear you. I mean, I, okay. I, I, yeah, okay. go ahead. I continue. I learned a lot from number one being there are two kingdoms. At that point in time, Satan's kingdom was in And I had no idea how it got there. I had no idea how to get rid of it. Nora and Christine taught me the power of prayer and how not to have fear when these things happen. I know now that I'm protected. I, there's nothing that could, that could happen here that would harm me because I'm protected. I pray. I pray into the Holy Spirit. I ask for Jesus to protect us at all times. Even though my sons continue, Nora, if you can believe it. They continue to play. Well, one of them continues to play around with these things. Um. I will tell all of you that um, a Ouija board, for example, is not a harmless toy. You can no, buy it's not. No, you can buy it in a toy store. I, I know kids that have them mm -hmm. to their parents about it. They think I'm crazy. But you have no idea what's going to come through that, that board, that portal. That opens such a portal. Ouija boards are often the thing that has Chris and I going out to help a person. They're extremely dangerous. I tell kids all the time. See, what people think because it doesn't always create a problem, right? that, that, there's no problem. Yeah, that there's no problem. Sure. I mean, if, if there was a what? problem every time, nobody would ever buy a Ouija board. Right. You know, so demons and dark sides know better. They're only going to do it once in a while because they want to have that exposure. Right. And they pray. Right. They pray right. on the, right. the week. I tell, I'm sorry. Kids, I tell kids all the time that what what kind of wisdom do you think is going to come through that board to you? There, right. there, there's nothing there that's going to enlighten you. Um, I think a lot of times kids think it's harmless. They're looking for truth is what they're, they're looking for, the meaning of life. They're looking for answers. That's not the place to find it. Um, and that's just one example of how to play with the dark side, you know. But yeah, that's one of many. And um, unfortunately, simple things that you see on Facebook, like 
groups of kids are all excited and they're doing that uh, Mary Mary, something like that. It's like, whoa, please don't do that. You don't understand. There will yeah. be times that you are calling forth a demon successfully. Or when people are calling forth for spirits mm -hmm. that they can't name or that they don't really know. Is there anybody there out there? Right. right. Whoa. You're opening yeah. up a door that anybody and anything can come through. Exactly. And you're not doing it in the proper frame of mind. You haven't centered your energy. You haven't asked for God's love and protection and light. You right. haven't called in the angels to, to watch your back. And you haven't picked your ideal. Like you've right. picked your ideal. You said the Holy Spirit is your... Is, I'm using the word ideal, but that's your ideal. That is who you you aim to be as close like as possible. It's who you focus and on. Who you focus on. So whether it's Buddha, the Holy Spirit, the Blessed Mother, it, as long as it's a powerful, good force, a Saint Michael, these are the things that you need to have lined up before you open any doors. And intuition is great then, and, and tapping in is great, but you don't need tools like a Ouija board. You use your own mind. You no. use your own energies. No. You protect yeah. yourself at all times. Once you, you, once you open that door, it, you have no idea what's going to come through, and you have no idea how to get rid of it. You, you, you're not protected. So, yeah, there, I, I could go on all night about that. but Yeah, no. so I want to give you a chance to get a reading, uh, at least something. Do you have any questions for us before we jump back on the feed and answer more questions over there? Okay, um, I, think I'm, I think I'm on the right track with my life pretty much. I guess the one thing that really stands out to me is professionally. I am not quite clear on what I should be doing. I've, I've had that question in my mind for a very long time. Um, it's not so much about finances as it is about making a contribution, you know, in the right way, doing what I'm called to do. And I feel pulled in many different directions and I'm just standing here going, I'm 53 years old and I still don't know. Well, they're telling me that you're not happy in the location that doing what you're doing right now. And I asked them, where do we send her? What, what area does she need to look in? And they're telling me that she has it in her heart where she really wants to go, but she doesn't think she's going to make any money at it. Oh. And they're telling me that it's it's right there for you to make the change. And it won't even require too much re-education or learning. Mm -hmm. And I get you already know about it and you've thought about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it kind of resonates with me, yes. And they're it's saying that... It's not a big deal to change the go. I'm, I'm sorry. Spiritually based too. You'll have the new job by March, April. Okay. And it is. It is. A says I'm, I'm picking up based. that it's a very spiritual based type job. Good. Okay. As a, it has a big spiritual component to it, but you're going to make money doing it. Okay. And you're going to enjoy it a lot more than what you're doing now. I, I just know that I'm here to help people. That's all I've ever done is help people. It borders on codependency sometimes because I try to fix <laughs> things that other people should be doing for themselves. But at the same time, I, I, I know that's generally my calling. I just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> that's funny. Well, what they're telling me to tell you is when you pray at night, just basically ask them for guided meditation in the morning of what to look for. Because they're saying it's right there, and you'll find it within three weeks. Oh, okay. You'll know exactly what it is in three weeks. I'm sorry, I'm joking. And by the sixth week, you'll be on the road to finding just how fast you can acquire it. Okay. Okay. All righty. All right. Well, I want to, I want to thank you for joining us and sharing what you, you know, everything that the experiences you've had. Yeah. Um, if this has helped anyone in any way, please feel free to comment. Let Lisa know because, as she said, she is codependent and she would like to know she helped somebody. <laughs> Laura, I would like to also say before I go, I highly recommend your book, The Spiritual Psychic. I have it. Oh, thank Chapter you. four, amazing. If thank that you. doesn't say right about Ouija boards, nothing will. Uh, but it's it's a short, concise book that will really enlighten you about. Um, being grounded, being safe, um, 
you know, understand everything that we're talking about on this show. I, I highly, I couldn't recommend it more. It's great. It's on Thank Amazon. You. you can read it very quickly, but it's written in such a way that you will understand. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. And I swear to you, I did not pay for that. <laughs> Have you. a great day. Bye bye. Okay, I uh, want to get right back to our feed so we can get as many questions as possible. And I can't answer this question while well, I can, but um, it's my cousin. So I'm going to turn it over to Chris. Laura, I feel so much like Lena. I miss my mom so much. I feel like part of heart has been, a part of my heart has been ripped out. Is there a way for me to connect with her? Of course there is. Every spirit wants to talk to us and they want to be a part of us, but they want to do it in a safe way when you're ready. And part of you is you're just so emotional sometimes that she gets afraid of dream dates. And I know you've heard about them because she's telling me she's heard about them, but she's not really sure if that's for her. And I said, well, you know, you can discuss that with her at a later date, mom. But she's telling me that she is there and she's, she's patting your face like this and she feels like she just wants to put you on her shoulder and just like pat your face is what she's showing me and that you're just really upset right now and she says that you'll get the stronger connection very quickly and that she's sending you birds white birds i don't know what kind of white birds they are they just look strange to me i don't they might be like a dove but it looks bigger than a dove i don't understand what kind of bird she's sending you but when you start to see white birds think about mom because that's what she's sending them she's trying to send you the white bird because she wants you to feel peace she says you don't feel at peace you miss her too much and you're causing a lot of unrest in your world all right honey i hope that helped uh lena says uh yes so i'm guessing she's saying yes to the whole towel feeling on her or her mom uh, she says thank you and she's been grieving for about four years um i've been teased about the pennies from heaven caller <laughs> so caller that is your husband sending his love i love getting the feedback so quick thank you guys uh gabriel gabriella excuse me it's been a hard year for Joey and I with the loss of the baby and my dad. Will it get better soon with healing and moving forward? I love these guys. This is one of my adopted sons. So I, I'm going to, I have to step back because I have my readings and stuff that I, so I have to step back. It'll get easier over time. Grief always does. But they're also telling me that you just feel like nobody in heaven loves you anymore. And they're telling me it couldn't be any further from the truth. And that they do love you. And they're sending you love and wishes of wellness. And that the baby wasn't meant to be here. And you knew that on some level. And that you're going to have other children. So they're telling me to tell you to leave your heart open and leave your arms open and catch because here comes one. And I'm also getting your dad is holding the child and I'm trying to figure out what's that taste in my mouth so I can confirm licorice. to you. Um, or Get so, like a licorice feel. Yeah, yeah. I, so I I, I'm, I'm always thinking it's like the licorice tobacco smell more than the licorice candy, like the licorice. I get so, a licorice flavor. Right. So your dad either smoked the cigar or pipe with a licorice type flavor, or he liked the candy licorice, licorice. I'm messing up that word. But that's his way of letting you know that it's him and he's holding your baby. And your baby will be there when you get there and will be growing on the other side. And it was meant for him to go through the process that he went and for you guys to learn something and grow from it. I hope it helps, honey. Uh, let us know about the licorice. <laughs> um, Carla, I have, uh, wait, let me, I just wanted to check and see if there's anybody else. All right, Carla, I felt different energies over the years of people close to me who have passed. Can you tell me which energies are around me now and if they have any messages now, because we already answered your question, but <laughs> we're going to tell you how you can do it yourself. You want to 
give some advice on how you can actually start to feel and know who it is? Well, you have to center your energy and you have to say a little prayer to whoever your ideal is, whoever your God. And just ask them to identify in a safe, loving way who is and just go through each of the spirits that you feel and ask them to stand in a, I always ask them to stand in a semicircle left to right. And I just go through and I feel them all with my left hand. And then I identify how many are there, whether they're male or female. And then I ask who they are. And then I usually get the answers pretty quick. And they'll usually speak to you in a feeling like a mother, grandmother. They'll give you a very protective feeling. Sometimes a very harsh feeling is a male that is just like, no nonsense, get it over with, don't test me. They don't like to be tested on the other side. And sometimes, you know, we as humans want a lot of verification of who they are and what they are. And sometimes you get a little pissy about that. Okay, so what do we mean when we say it feels like a grandmother energy? You'll hear us say it feels like a mom energy or a sister energy. What we're relating to is how it feels for us when we're with our grandmother, or when I'm with one of my sisters, I'm like, this is the same feeling. So when you're asking who's present, you what do you feel like? But again, please do not do this without having your center of an ideal. You ask your personality to just step aside. You say a prayer of protection. Again, the Lord's prayer is the most powerful. And then reach out. You're safe. You've created the proper environment. Just don't go out there and start talking to whoever, guys. All right? Uh, Carla, I hope that helps. Let us know on a future show if you've tried it, what you've experienced, and if anybody else um, has done such things, share it with each other and share it with us. Um, I don't know what you mean, Laura. I see them all at the beach across from where I live. Uh, you were talking to Laura. I don't know. Oh, white birds. Duh, I just saw the light <laughs> above it. Awesome. So your mom is pointing out the uh, white birds. Okay. She's telling you a whole beach of them. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Hi, Donna. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. And congratulations on getting married, sweetheart. I used to work with Donna years ago. Uh, okay, Gabriella. My dad was a smoker and he liked black licorice. So okay. there's your confirmation, honey. Your daddy's holding your baby. And thank you for letting us all know we did hit that one correctly. Um if there's any other questions out there, you just throw them right on the feed. If you just want to say hello to us, we love to see those little hearts go by. And more importantly, we love if you share, share the share. show. <laughs> share, share, share. And I just got to say, you guys blow us away. Um, our last two shows both went over 5,000 views. And that's just amazing for a couple moms who are having fun and doing what we love. So thank you very much for that and keep on sharing. If you'd like to be a guest on our show and have a reading or bring up questions or just some want to speak about an experience like Lisa, just put guest in the column and I'll send you an email. I want to apologize to anybody who used the forms on the website. Apparently, they were not working properly, so I never got back to you. The forms have been fixed. So if you do go to Into Intuition and complete a form now uh, or at any time, I will get it properly. And again, I'm sorry for all of that. And one last little piece, if you'd like a reading from Chris, just type in, uh, just text her at the number there that you'd like a reading. She'll get back with you and schedule an appointment. And if you're part of this show, mention our show and she'll give you 10% off. I don't do readings anymore except for the show because I'm too busy teaching and that's really my calling. So, but I like to read on the show. All right, let's see what else is going on. I know we got a lot more things coming up. All right, Stephanie. Work has been stressful. Many fires that constantly have to be put out. Too many hands in a pot. Will work be coming down soon? Thank you for letting me join. I've been read by Christine several times. Great. So I'll answer this since you okay. already know. <laughs> I'm getting work's going to come down in three. So um, three weeks or three months. 
I feel more like it's three months than three weeks, but it's going to rapidly be cooling down. Whatever the crisis was, whatever the um, big issue that came in that caused everybody to just go through turmoil is calming down. I'm getting something about management was a real uh, problem for a while. So there had to be a lot of shifting going on. Uh, don't leave the job. It's actually a place where you find a lot of satisfaction when things are going well and they are going to start going well again. So don't jump ship yet, you know, hang in there and feel it out. It, I'm getting that it will be positive for you. Want to add anything? No. Nope. Okay. Works All for right. me. Works for Chris, so we should be good. All right. Lisa, a former guest who just jumped off. Uh, Michael Fleming is having trouble posting. She'd like me to ask the spirit in her home, Jenny, whom you discussed last week with Michelle. Who is Jenny? I, I'm... I'm not sure what this, I'm not sure who they were referring to last week. Okay, there wasn't a show last week, so it had to be the one two weeks ago. And I don't know if it was the house with, the house that was having all the trouble, the, with the severe problems. We've reached out to them twice. We've offered our assistance. We have not heard back from them. Um, and I'm not comfortable about speaking about the spirits in that house. Um, oh, of course, really? yeah, it's just, it's private. Mm, it's not a good idea since they're, we're not really working with them. And Dave, you are watching us live. Thank you so much for joining us. Send um, me hearts, Dave. Yeah, hit a couple hearts on there. Make Chris happy. Um, again, guys, please share the show. We absolutely share, share, love share. hearing from you. And if you want to send any comments to us privately, you can do into intuition. All right, Don, I recently lost a job, and I'm wondering about my job search. Do you see me getting a job soon? Also, I've gotten feelings of protection during this time. Is there someone helping me? There is a male energy just came right up, like, yeah, me. It's me. Feels uh, like your father. Dad, like a dad energy. So if your dad hasn't passed on, because I really don't know, um, it's somebody just like your father. So, and I'm getting a lot of sports around them, like sports jerseys. So whoever it is, is somebody who really was into sports and wore jerseys often. And he is protecting you. He is watching after you. And he's excited that you know. So, and Diane, they're telling me that even though you're working at it, you feel like Diane. you're not getting where you want to go. And they're saying, even though you're going to feel stuck in the future, you're going to get a better job than the one you had. And it's going to pay more. So you might get a little raise, a little bump up. But this male energy is all over it. And I get, they're protecting you from, I see them wrapping themselves around you in like a big cube standing behind you. So there's more than one. There's like five of them. But the father energy or it's whoever huge. he is, he's not to be messed with. And He's I'm like, sorry again. For, yeah, sorry for butchering your name. I mean, for crying out loud, Diane, Donna, you think I would be able to read? I'm tired. <laughs> oh, Laura, thank you for saying we rock. We think so. So please share our show, everybody. <laughs> we like it. We like what we do. Okay, Stephanie. Uh, yes, management has been the issue. I have been feeling like jumping ship. Thank you. Don't jump ship yet, honey. Let management settle down. This job really does seem to speak to you. And thank you for giving us the confirmation. All right. So um, we really want to take a little bit of time to, to always to teach a little during these shows. So uh, the subject we wanted to cover tonight was more about smudging and clearing your home. Uh, we get a lot of questions about it. So I'm going to explain some of the basics. Chris is going to explain, because I just am putting that out there for her now, what she actually adds to her smudging. When I smudge, I'm using holy water, but Chris does it a very um, traditional American Indian fashion. Um, again, we don't smudge either one of us unless we're praying. So again, you're going to get tired of me saying this, but you have your ideal. 
you minimize your personality, kind of imagine yourself getting small, putting your personality into this little mini me, telling you, um, I'll be back with you shortly, but you need to step aside, channel from on high from your ideal place, and then you start moving through your home. But we'll Okay, we're back up. So go ahead, honey. All right. Basically, what I tell everybody when you're going to smudge is first pray. Pray, 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 pray. I usually will pray the day before, the day of, the morning of. Um, if you're Catholic and you can get your hands on some holy water, get a two-liter bottle and put it in a little hairspray bottle. And that's what I use. I use that to begin with. I keep that in one section of my little kit that I carry. And then I use the Native Americans is the way I was taught by the Native American chiefs on how to smudge energy and how to change the energy throughout the household. And we use a really nice sage. I use a real plain sage. And sometimes I use the stick and sometimes when the spirits tell me to use the bowl, I put, I put it in layers, and it depends what kind of energy we're dealing with. If we're just doing a really uh, no-nonsense cleaning and it just needs sage, you just use, the, you use a fan, and we use turkey feathers, because um, you never want to blow your energy into the smoke because that's putting your spirit into it. And sometimes I can't find it, and I use cardboard because I misplaced my feathers one time. Haven't done that again. But what you want to do is you want to get the smudge smoke into everywhere while you're praying. And you want to have a backup person with you because sometimes the little embers get loose and you want to make sure that doesn't happen. You don't set the place on fire. Open up all the doors, all the cabinets. Pick whether you start from the top of the house down or the bottom of the house up, whichever way you want to go. But pick one direction. Why do I tell you to pick one direction? Because it's a lot easier to remember and just go on remote. And you just, anywhere there's a widescreen TV that looks like a mirror, a toilet, a sink, anything with a liquidy type mirror image to it, a big picture, anything like that, you want to do a name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit three times in front of it. You want to close off any portals, okay? If you're in a sink or a toilet, you shake some of the ashes down there because negative energy likes to hide water. And just flush it through the pipes and just ask that it be cleared all the way up to the sewer. Um, you want to use figure eights in your combination. You want to use spirals. You want to get in those dark little deep places. You want to make sure it gets everywhere in the room. And sometimes the harder, the more you smudge, some rooms will go in and there'll be hardly a trace. Other rooms will go in you think you set the joint on fire. And I assure you, heavy. if you have young people playing video games, <laughs> Oh, gosh, Especially the worst. ones with the killing and everything else. Those rooms will be a Bad. lot more heavier smudging needing to be done. And a lot of negativity is built up there. Doesn't mean there's an evil spirit. It's just a lot of negative energy. And the Dracula series, my daughter mm -hmm. always wonders why her, her room looks like we set it on fire. And it's because she likes to watch, like, you know, Buffy the Vampire and all these Dracula and horror shows and I'm like that's why you got it she's like but I'm not a bad person well I didn't say you were I just said right. you're, you're just you're inviting it, it in some ag irregular energy is what I right. call it it's not really negative until you allow it in and you turn it to the dark and you start to play with it or interact with it in the way you should and my kids are very well aware if you don't play with Ouija boards because I would just have a breakdown. <laughs> she would disown them. <laughs> <laughs> and any door that leads to the outside that you want to name the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, you want to always guard it. And at the end, you will definitely feel a shift in the energy. And I tell everybody, just sit there in your wherever the last room is or the kitchen, wherever the back end of the ending is and if you have a garage that's attached that walks directly into the house you got to do the garage too i tell everybody just sit there and invite the angels in and ask them to come and i tell them to put big tubes around all the doors and exits to the house and just suck out any negativity that i might have missed 
And I'm telling you, you feel like you're high after you get done. And you that smells smell. a little bit funky right. <laughs> from the sage. Um, and the whole time you're moving the smoke, you are praying. Constantly. It is not, yeah, it's not. Um, the smoke is not doing the work. The it's the prayer, prayer is. is doing the work. And this, this, this carrying it through and just moving it and being a visual aid for you to see where it's heavy and not. Right, where it wants you to sit and kind of set up camp. Because mm -hmm. if you're seeing a huge smoke residue, you know that room needs a lot of extra prayers. And that's when I take the holy water and I spray every room I go into. And it's just matter of fact. It's not even because it's a better room or a worse room. It's just everybody gets a spray. Right. <laughs> and it's just to make sure that all the energy is good when I leave it. All right. So let's grab another question. Um, Sandy, love the show. Thank you, Sandy. So share. share. <laughs> uh, thank you both for sharing your gift. Uh, thank you. Can you tell me anything about my future career, health, retirement? Career, I'm getting she's on the right path. She's doing good where she's at. Right. Health, I'm getting a little wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little, though. You're not really seriously ill. It's like, you know, if you worked out some, you'd find a significant improvement, especially in the lower back. Uh, and, and the right knee. Oh, that right knee doesn't like you. Uh, and I get it's the way you're sitting. So try and watch your posture as I sit straighter. Right. All of a sudden we straighten up. Watch your posture. <laughs> and I get retirements within a, your reach. Yeah, and it's financially it's, not a burden. It's not going to be a big deal. I mean, it's But not, it's going to be a boredom. You better watch that <laughs> idea. <laughs> but as far as <coughs> financially, you're not going to be um, super you know, comfortable, but you're going to be comfortable. You're not going to I have get any issues. Good long term mm -hmm. information and news with the retirement. I don't get like you're going to have to worry, but you're not, you know, you're not going to live like millionaires. I just feel like it's going to everything will go along as it needs to. Okay. So I'm just peeking now to see if we have any more questions coming up. Um, and we are having a little trouble with the feed. I apologize because I've already been told you guys uh, can't always get your questions up. So I'm checking the best I can. In the meantime, make sure you share us and send us a few hearts because we do love that. Um, I'm going to jump into the other section of this thing and see if there's any questions here. Let's jump up. Okay. It doesn't look like any more live questions at this time. So, so um, if there is, we'd like to, again, invite you to be our guest. And we want to tell you, you guys are the first to know, we will be doing a live show probably in Trenton, New Jersey, sometime in February. So keep an eye on the website. Um, it'll be free to a nominal cost or depending on exactly where we're having it. Uh, I'll be discussing a um, topic that I love, the intuitive footprints, because I think that's something, if everybody could understand, you'd put Chris and I out of business in a heartbeat. <laughs> and I want everybody to understand it. And Chris and I have agreed that we're actually going to read the room. So one of those gallery type things where we're just going to see what spirits come in for who and tell you who's visiting and what they have to say. So keep an eye on the website Into Intuition. Keep listening to us here, and we'll make sure to tell you um, anything as, as it progresses, as we get it completely set up. We'll be happy to read the gallery. It's going to make you all cry. <laughs> um, okay, Melissa just sent me a message saying she can't get on the live feed, but... Um, I've had some health issues the last few months. Doctors so far don't have an answer, any insight. That's your, you got to answer that one. I know that one. I got, I got, um, 
I'm getting Lyme's disease, honey. Uh, I hate to say that. Now, please remember, guys, um, in, into it, I can do, I do medically into it, uh, but I'm not a doctor. But I would ask them if they would test you on the lines. And, uh, yeah, I would ask them. I don't think it's that myalgia, uh, even though I'm kind of hearing that Fibre, it's fibromyalgia. fibromyalgia. I'm hearing that, but I'm hearing it much lower than the lines one. So it's this confusion but uh, I would ask them to definitely test you, get you a, uh, a shot to see um, to see if that could possibly be it. Um, did we do, Maria? I feel like somebody. Yes, I think we did. Uh, count me in, ladies. Great, Diane. We'd love to see you at our show. Uh, Dave, Chris, since you have a moment, how is Shelly doing? How is Shelly doing? Oh, Shelly doing just fine, Dave. <laughs> She's alive and well, dear. Okay. So Tina says, my sister Shauna is looking for a new job. Do you see this happening anytime soon? Two to three I'm getting. And and I feel I'm like, more it like it's like months. months. Yeah, I'm getting the same thing. It's months. Look at her resume. Something's not right with that resume she's sending out. And I don't know if it's a setup or it looks old fashioned. It's just they're telling me it needs to be spiffied up. It needs to be modernized. Okay. So maybe that's something you could help her with. Because they're saying that you're really good at that. Okay, Shauna. Again, Shauna's one who's having trouble getting through. And it says, so I guess this is Shauna's looking for a new job. So this is Shauna uh, hitting us up on a private message. I have a supervisor bullying me to the point I fear job loss. Do you see a better, more prosperous job in my near future? So, yeah, we just kind of answered that, Shauna, with your sister. But you need to spruce up that resume like Chris said. So um, go online. There's so many great resources for doing this stuff. All right. Um, and Melissa said, whoops, gosh, so many messages are popping up, guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying to read them at the same time I'm trying to read the feed. I'm not used to having them pop up like that. So I'll do my best. Chelsea, I'm currently in college and undecided if I'm making the right choice in a career. And I'm wondering if you can tell me anything about my future. Oh, okay, Chelsea. So I kind of, Chelsea, I need you uh, to kind of imagine two paths. You're going to have to answer this question without too much input from me. The path you're on right now and a path you think you might want to be on while you're in college. Uh, I know which path I think looks better, but I'm asking you to look for yourself at this moment. Give yourself the opportunity because I'm being told you can see what I'm talking about. You can sense it. So I want to give you the opportunity to do it. And I will answer your question, but not right away. <laughs> Take a deep breath, Chelsea. Yeah, just hold it for five seconds and release it. Center your energy. Do it again a couple times. Get yourself nice and centered. And then think question A, question B. If I stay in the course I'm in, and I had to imagine what the path will look like. What does the path look like if I stay in this major? And write it down on a piece of paper. And then say to yourself, if I switch to a different major, specifically this one, uh, what does my path look like? Now, you want to look at what does the trail look like you're walking on is it paved is it rocky is it sandy and what do these things mean to you are there shrubs on it trees on it or is there lots of greenery does it look rich or is it barren and hardly anything around it maybe just a cactus um and this will help you decide which way to go i like want to tell you what i see but i feel like i shouldn't tell her 
No, let her figure it I'm out. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Sorry. You're going to figure this out, and then you're going to privately message me or hit me up later on the comments what you get, and uh, I'll be glad to share with you what I got. But I just know this is one that they're telling me you need to answer for yourself and where to mind that business. So good luck, and make sure to contact me. I want to know how it goes, okay? Uh, Maria. No one didn't say anything to me. No one didn't say anything to me. Uh, I'm not sure what it was in reference to. So, Oh, okay. Here's a different question that she put in. Anything you see for me in the future, having a hard time with a big decision? I'm getting most of the hard. It's very emotional very very emotional this isn't a financial kind of thing this is a but it has finances around it but your heart's tied in one direction and it almost doesn't matter what happens with the finances because your heart's not in it in the other direction you have to decide where you really want to be Maria because I feel like if you try to do something just because you think it'll make more money, you can make the money, but you'll be miserable. Mm -hmm. So just make sure your heart's in it, or at least you have some kind of interest in what that other change is going to be. Because the money will be there, whether you want it or not, with what you're currently doing, where your heart's at. It'll just be a little harder to ascertain than if you jump ship and go to the ease, what you think is the easier, faster route. Mm -hmm. Anything different, Nora? No, I actually like what you said, so okay. I'm going to go with it. Okay, we're going to take a few more questions, um, and we are going to end at 10 o'clock. But just a quick reminder, uh, to anybody who sent any messages to us through the uh, website Into Intuition, prior to today, it didn't work, and I apologize. So feel free to... Send any, uh, if you want to be a guest, you can contact me that way, or you can just put guest in the feed right now, and I will make sure you get the information. If you want a reading from Chris, here's her phone number. She does give 10% discount if you mention the show. So jot it down and just email her. Or and text me. Text me. I meant to say that. Sorry. And again, we are going to be doing the live show, and we do hope that you join us. It's coming up in February. So we're going to hit a few more questions before we hit our 10 o'clock mark. Uh, Donna, my dad is sick with prostate cancer. However, I feel he's not telling me everything. Is it more? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It is more, Donna. Um but there's a lot of good reasons why he's not telling you, honey. And um, I know you from Facebook. So uh, plus I know, well, we worked together many, many moons ago. Technically, we don't really know each other. It's been so long now. But I've seen on Facebook that you're getting married. So, you know, full disclosure, I did not pick that up intuitively. I picked that up logically. And uh, that's a real good reason why your dad's not telling you everything. He so doesn't want to take this joy from you. He doesn't want any more care than he's already getting, first of all. And he's not going to change the course of what he's going to do, and he doesn't want you to change the course of what you're doing for him. He wants you to go, and he wants you to have a beautiful wedding. He wants to be there for you, to support you. And if he has to take 10 pain pills just to sit up straight, he will. He'll do whatever it takes. He just wants to see you happy and happily married. And there's enough, in his mind, there's enough time in the end to worry about him. All right, honey, I hope that helps. I am sorry. And we'll keep your dad in our prayers. Again, we do have an awesome prayer group, guys. We really so do. if you need help in that respect, don't hesitate to message Chris or I, and we will put you on that list. Michelle. You ladies are awesome. Thank you. So make sure you share. Share, share, <laughs> share. share, share. <laughs> Will and my hearts. I like my hearts. Will my husband get a promotion or get relocated back to New Jersey and when? Uh, I'm getting yes, back to New Jersey. Um, 
I'm getting possible on a promotion. What are you getting? They, they want to can... give him the promotion, but he might get the promotion before he gets back to New Jersey. Because I'm getting the promotion in two, two weeks, two months. Okay, so cool. And so that you take her in the end, he, my reading, and you got everything you want. That might be how he gets, <laughs> he gets back. the promotion to come home. So um, he's going to be positive. That's awesome. Please um, let us know later on uh, what happens. We'd love to know. Uh, also, guys, you know, when we ask you to let us know, please tell us what it's in reference to. <laughs> we forget. <laughs> we do. We do forget. And uh, we're going to wrap it up shortly, but just so you understand, when we do any kind of readings, we our personalities are truly out of the way right now. I mean, our bubbly selves are here, but uh, we don't recall. It comes out, it's done. It's a message to you, to whomever we're reading, to whatever we're teaching, and then it's gone. So when you're feeding back to us, you know, we, you got to give us a little information to help us trigger our, mem our memories. Uh, please tell me, laugh out loud, Chelsea Robinson. I'm not sure what you want to know, about Chelsea, but hey, great. Um, one more, because we are at the 10 o'clock hour, the bewitching hour. Melissa, my doctor just submitted my request for ADA accommodations today. Will my company allow them, or should I start looking for a new job? They don't want to lose you, but they don't want to do it, is what I'm getting. Something um, about HR, they're afraid that if they do it for you, they're going to have to do it for everybody. But they can't get around it. If the doctor says they have to do it, they have to do it. But they're not going to be happy about it. And it's... Um, and I get you get it, but you might also, if you look for a job, you'll find one. Okay, you have a lot of good qualities and you are valuable to them. They don't really want to lose you. It's the kind of between a rock and a hard place in their mind. They don't realize how this really is not a big deal. They can do it. Right. So, yeah, it's just somebody's personality in the company that's being hard nosed over nothing. Uh, we wish you luck. Okay, for those of you already on the feed, we will do our best to answer any questions that we did not get to while the show was live. Thank you again for all the prayers and support that was sent to myself and my family and the Chris. Thank you. My dad was like uh, a, a father to Chris too. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all next week, nine o'clock. Please share the show throughout the week. Give us lots of hearts and... That's it. That's Love it. you. See you next week. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye. And it should be done. <laughs>